In the month of March, I've made quick Photoshop tutorials on edits such as realistic scar, gold color effect, engraved money, and the use case of Puppet Warp Tool. I hope you will find it useful. And if you want to watch these quick tutorials each week before I release it on YouTube as a compilation like this one, follow me on social media. If I had to create a realistic scar like this one, here's how I'd do it. First, on an empty new layer, I'll draw a scar with a clean cut. I'm using the pen tool for this, but you can also use any other tool or drawing technique to get the desired shape. I'll name the layer scar and turn it into a smart object. Inside blending options, I'll choose a dark red as a color overlay. Then, I'll make a duplicate layer under the main layer and name it Blur 1. By going to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur, I'll choose the radius value of 10, and then click OK to close the window. After that, I'll duplicate this layer once again and name it Blur 2. And inside the Gaussian Blur settings, I'll change the radius from 10 to 3. If the blur layers are too intense, you can always select both of them and just reduce the opacity. Then I'll select the main scar layer and make another duplicate of it. I'll change the name to Highlights. Inside its blending options, I'll change the color overlay to white. And then by using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll move it to the right side by one or two pixels. Then I'll make yet another copy of the layer and rename it to Shadows. And you guessed it right. Inside the blending options, I'll change the color from white to black. Once that's done, I'll move this layer just a bit to the left. These highlights and shadows layers will add the fake 3D effect, thus making the scar look more realistic. And considering this looks a bit too strong right now, I'll select both layers and reduce the opacity. I'll group them together and add a layer mask to the groove. With the black brush tool selected, I'll paint over the corner areas of the scar where the skin isn't cut too far apart. The beauty of working with smart objects is that I can later go inside of it and make some modifications, which will automatically update all the blending layers. If by any chance you want to know how to steal this gold effect from Mr. Beast thumbnails in about 60 seconds, simply continue watching. Let's start by turning this boring gray stone into gold. First, I'll go ahead and create a gradient map. I'll make sure it's clipped to the layer below. Then I'm going to add four color stops of the same color tone, which is in this case a mix between orange and yellow. These four color stops will range from dark to bright, and they will be distributed equally. The darkest color will be located at number 1. The next one will be located at 33. The one after that will be at 66, and the last one will be at 100. Once this setup is over, it's time to play with the color positioning. Depending on the materials and the lighting of your subject, you'll have to move these color stops around in order to get the desired look. And to make your life easier when doing this gold effect, I added this gold gradient to my existing metal gold gradients pack, which you can download for free by visiting the link that's on the screen. When you download this gradient pack, just select the last gold gradient, clip it to the layer below, and move the sliders around until your object looks nice and shiny, fully covered in gold. And if you're interested in learning more about editing different vehicles into gold, I made a detailed video on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check that as well. In this quick video, I'll show you how to create the engraved money effect. First, let's start by turning our colored image into black and white. Then create a gray solid color adjustment layer and turn it into a smart object. Go to Filter Gallery and inside Sketch Folder, click on the half tone pattern effect. Depending on your image size resolution, you'll want to play around with the settings to achieve the best look. In my case here, I'm working with a 2000 by 2000 pixels image, so I'll go with the size of 3 and contrast of 0. And for the pattern type, make sure to choose dot. Then click on the plus button at the bottom to add one more effect and choose torn edges. Image balance will be set to 22, smoothness at 11, and the contrast at 1. To make the texture seem more random and twirly, go to filter, distort, and click on twirl. I'll keep the angle at 100, but for your example, you'll probably want to play around to see what looks the best. Now that I have the texture created, I'll change the blending mode to a heart mix. Considering the shadows and highlights are just too strong, I'll apply a curves adjustment layer to try and fix that. If the curves adjustment layer can't fix the issue completely, you can always select your image layer and then go to image adjustments and click on shadows slash highlights. Play around with the sliders until you get an acceptable look. I'll also revisit the curves adjustment layer to further adjust the look of the image. Once I'm happy with the lighting and the texture, all that remains to be done is to color everything appropriately. 
I'll do this with a gradient map just like this. And now that I have the image with the engraved money effect applied to it, let's add it to an actual paper money. Here I have this customizable $100 note from the Thumbnails Plus Assets Pack. I'll copy-paste the image I just created and scale it down to fit the size of the money note. You can see that I have a mask selection of this area where the image of the person is supposed to go. So I'll just select that layer mask and move it to our image. By unlinking a layer mask from the layer, I can freely move the image and place it in the correct position. Now, depending on your image and how it looks, you'll be required to make a few final adjustments to blend it properly with the money note. Here, I'll change the blending mode to darker color and once more create a clipped curves adjustment layer to lift up the overall brightness of my Mr. Beast image. Once I'm happy with the blend, I'll take this solid color adjustment layer and apply it to everything, which also allows me to change the color in pretty much one click. In this video, I'll show you the use case of one of my favorite Photoshop tools, the Puppet Warp. Here I have this recent thumbnail from Mr. Beast. I went ahead and separated him from the background, so it's easier to showcase the Puppet Warp tool in action. Before you start using this tool, make sure that your layer is a smart object. When you open the Puppet Warp tool and you don't see anything, you might want to enable the Show Mesh option, which is located here at the top. You can quickly analyze the selection, and if some parts of your subject are not within the mesh, you can always expand it. In my case here, everything is within the mesh, so I'll keep the expansion at 2, and then hide the mesh so it's easier to work with the subject. I'll start by adding the pin in the middle of his torso and continue adding them on the joints of his body. Once I have the pins set in place, I can select each one of them individually and move them around. If you want to be precise with this tool, you can always hover with your mouse over the pin and when you press Alt key on your keyboard, this circle will appear. Without letting go of your Alt key, click on the circle and freely rotate any part of the body in any direction you want. You can mix this technique with the freestyle movement to achieve the desired pose. However, Make sure you don't go wild with this as the results will be pretty crazy. This tool is excellent for subtle body pose adjustments, so let's show it in one more example. Just a few days ago, I made this Mr. Who's the Boss thumbnail. Looking back at it now, I think it would have looked better if his arm holding the laptop appeared to be a little higher. So, if I were to make this update now, here's how I'd do it. First, I'd select everything and move it down a few pixels. Then, I'd select the boss layer. Go to Edit and click on Puppet Warp. As you can see, I'm adding a few points to the main part of his body, which I want to keep in the same place. After I'm done with that, I'll add one point in the middle of his arm and move it up just like this. But now I want to bring back down his hand in the laptop, so I'll add one more pin on the wrist as well to keep it in place. And then I'll add the last pin on his hand to move it down. I think this quick update edit made the thumbnail look much more intense than the initial version, which took me less than 60 seconds to do. The Puppet Warp tool is crazy good and reliable for these types of edits, so I highly recommend you to try it out.